Good day, my beloved Gaian humanists. I'm being facetious. Gaia, there's, I suppose, a Gaia humanist in all of us because all of us are empathically sensitive, uh, intuitively subconscious towards the earth, towards um, being good to life, and a, with a sense of human sensitivity. And... Um, and empathic towards other human beings. Okay, I'm going to do a little segment right now. The reason sometimes my videos come out a little um, scatterbrained and sometimes um, reiter reiterating the same thing and really seeming to not to, you know, pluff down and not really get to the point is because I, I don't rehearse them I don't write them out I have an idea uh, clear that I have been uh, thinking about for a long time and then I say okay I'm gonna do something about that because now I see where it needs to conclude and and then I just throw myself <laughs> into this and uh, this is what comes out okay this one is going to be I'm gonna do a, a little quick one I hope about um, love and communication um, and uh, racism which doesn't really exist and that's what I'm going to talk about so um, as probably some of us as some of you may have already many of you probably noticed already that uh, in America we have been trying to solve quote unquote the problem of racism uh, and uh, and all this and prejudice but basically racism and you're being a racist and this and that for decades and it doesn't go away and I hope some people are starting to wonder what are we doing wrong we're not really hitting hitting it on the nail maybe we're going about it completely the wrong way um, so I'm going to try to explain what's what the situation is and why it's not going away and why we're actually making it worse the way we're going about it. We're uh, kind of fixating uh, what we call racism. Um, essentially, human beings, let's just establish that human beings, the human mind, the uh, mankind, um, in addressing the old, the age-old question of Christianity, are we a source, or do we come from evil, or do we come from good? Um, that should be answered that we come from good, because we come from the, uh, the intention and the force of life that wants to emanate and give and proliferate and evolve and push forward, and light goes forward, and warmth sends forth organisms and um, evolution and life comes forth and so the overall direction of life and therefore human consciousness and human beings sourced is you know conception it starts in something really powerful and good and it goes from there forward so understanding that gives us a reference point to uh, a lot of uh, things that People may ask, how do you conclude that? Well, because it starts a certain way, and then something else happens, and as a reaction to the previous, which is how it started, this is what occurs later. So you need the reference of our source. Um, to see each other, to call each other by our name, but what we look like, but what we buy, what we... Um, be our descriptions is a good thing it's not a bad thing unfortunately in society it seems that we are unwittingly establishing that to address us by our ethnical racial appearance is uh, bad and should be avoided and we have made a mess because we're never gonna subconsciously because we are sourced in life, we're never going to accept that calling somebody somebody black or um, Asian looking or Italian looking or what have you is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. 
um, how we say it and the reasons for, we, for which we say it are a different issue. But so we need to establish that it's a good thing um, that uh, to call each other by, uh, by what we see the other person describe. We don't know their names. It's okay to call somebody shorty. We come from love. And in fact, language always starts in love because I know that's, um, I'll explain why. Because the intent and the purpose language arises is to communicate and contact one another. So if you can imagine the first human being being alone in the desert and as soon as he sees another of his kind wanting to reach out to him, wanting to get his voice heard, the, the sheer discovery of that other human being is all about a good thing, it's about the collective growing and um, communicating amongst each other and so language always so even when we um, uh, this is very profound it's talking about what is being sourced at the very at the very most primitive part of our language brain sort of say so um, when we want to talk to somebody else we should always keep in mind that um, we mean something good which is to communicate now, if through that communication, through what we call somebody, we, um, we bear hate onto those words um, and charge them with uh, negative perspectives and prejudices, that's a different matter and it has to do more with uh, how we are raised and how we educate ourselves socially and culturally to regard our fellow human being and it is completely about something else. You cannot fix it by making people talk a certain way. And in fact, we hurt each other by uh, what we're doing is basically is making us afraid of speaking spontaneously and naturally. I always, um, I sort of got to this subject matter by comparing when I came back from living in Argentina as a child I remember, and still to this day, uh, Argentinians in Spanish calls um, people by nouns. I, no, I, I don't know. But Italian is not so much like that. Um, for example, you can call somebody skinny or fat or dark or uh, smart, you know, uh, nouns and adjectives. And it's all meant, like I said, stemming from uh, friendship, affection, what we, what we call in Spanish cariño, tenderness. It's a way of touching, reaching out to somebody and saying, hey, you know, in Spanish you say hey in many ways. You say, um, uh, you know, we have that in English too. We have the seven dwarfs, you know, and they're each called <laughs> a different thing. Um, we never understood the benefit uh, of, of, of being comfortable and familiar in calling each other that we used to, but then we started getting crazy with this thing about when you're being, you know, we used to say, we used to have nicknames uh, in the 50s for each other, and that all got uh, steamrolled over by this uh, desperate obsession to not to an idealism. It's what we're messing things up with uh, so badly by trying to impose idealisms of, of, of being a certain way upon each other. And we're just constricting us and we're not letting us, uh, we're doing it all in a, 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 a fear based um, idealisms. And so now we no longer, if you say anything that has to do with a person's appearance, there is no more. Uh, uh, there is no more cultural population that does not hear it as something belittling because we have trained each other already to hear it as something belittling. So if I say, if I call somebody sticks, like saying they're they're skinny, it doesn't alert the person to some kind of slur because nobody uses that. They will have to think about it a little bit. Oh, you mean I'm skinny? sticky, right? Um, and immediately that person, because they're growing up in this culture, will 
make the deduction that it's something negative because now we are afraid of calling each other things and as we have created African American and you know we shouldn't call each other nouns um, in so far as the category of a being you can't be a black you're a human being but if you call each somebody blackie it's it comes from love and affection of course we don't have this form in culture but it is important to understand the concept because we're we haven't solved the problem and we're only making it worse and so we we have to really th stop think about it a little bit and you know start up the engines differently again um, that's basically it and so those are the two things I wanted to make this really short video about um, how we're going about racism the wrong way we're actually making it worse and it's really um, ironic how we say stop segregating and separating people in your heart by how they look or what they are or where they come from that is uh, presuming that you mean wrong to begin with that you mean uh, ill by just addressing it and yet we create um, forms where we don't let each other forget <laughs> so it's really like we've gone a little crazy we're contradicting ourselves we're uh, punishing people by the law we're calling it hate and we want to give we want to give it a criminal connotation um, but it's ridiculous things that have to do with with speech speech does not make somebody dangerous in society but we have gotten so crazy that we are now judging people as hateful because they're not the way we have prescribed they need to speak to one another so it really is time that we um, stop thinking uh, obsessing with uh, wanting to dominate and control others in how they speak let ourselves be natural and really rethink the whole thing all over again and realize that when we speak to one another when we talk to one another we always start, the first spark comes from good and from love. Even if uh, immediately later we say, I'm going to kill you. In fact, when you say, I'm going to kill you, the first word you say is I. You don't say, you're going to be dead. That kind of requires a lot of work. And if you use I, it must be that you come from love first, and then you immediately turn it in to something that embodies the hate that you're feeling for that person. The, in, the spark intention of speech always comes from love and we have to start um, in, in a primitive subconscious um, part of a brain is what I mean. Um, we endow it, we charge it up and that's what we should be paying attention to is how we charge our speech and does that not have to do with how we're educating and raising our children uh, the values that we're teaching in family and, and there's all uh, this really spills into other subjects that have to do with the uh, de de um, uh, the um, liquefying or the the uh, not aggregating but disaggregating of family and uh, the individualism that no longer has children and parents in a strong bond that really gives them a, a cultural form anymore. Immediately we launch them into autonomous independence and the, the whole bond of family and child is, is becoming uh, d diluted. And, uh, it, you know, it's not an easy subject to understand what I'm talking about. It's not something that I could explain uh, or that I could explain actually very good. Uh, I can take certain parts at a time and I think that if we, I, I only focus on things like the, the error in how we're going about the subject of racism and segregation of one another through speech, uh, I could probably possibly succeed in getting that across. And then a deeper concept which is how the evolution of speech stemmed from what is now a very primitive part of our brain that is for a good intention, for a good reason. So it doesn't ever start uh, badly. And that's important also to understand because we're judging people as if they mean badly every time they open their mouth lately, it seems. Nothing, nobody can do anything right anymore where everybody's walking on eggshells and is 
You step in the wrong place, you risk going to jail for 60 years. It's nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. We, 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 we're, we're, uh, we have created a horrible society, and I don't want to get into that. We were, we were heading towards being a beautiful, we wanted a beautiful society, and now it's like everybody is just rushing and afraid. It's terrible. So at least we could maybe think about how the more obvious things that um, we're uh, doing wrongly, which is, for example, uh, worsening and installing and uh, fixing racism by thinking about it wrongly, wanting to dominate how people speak instead of teaching each other to not use, to maybe we need to teach the intelligence of the subject matter, which is when you are, we call somebody, hey fatty, hey fats, like your friend, right? Come over here, come on, come over here fats. That's love, right? So it's hard to hear, isn't it? Because we're American, we don't hear the love in that anymore. But um, if you later get really angry at that person, you probably wouldn't call them fats. You would call them fatty or fatso. And so what we need to learn is about, has to do with the heart and understand that Mr. Fat actually felt loved when w I called him Fats the first time, but when I called him Fatso, he felt the hate. And it's not that he got offended at the word Fatso, it is that he got hurt that I was hating him. When he got hurt that I felt that he felt hated, what he heard, the vehicle of that, hate was the word fatso. But fatso, the word, is not the problem. The problem is how I treated the guy and how I feel for him. This subtlety of, of, of social wisdom is what we're losing in America. This is what's going away, it's evaporating, and we're left with only judging ourselves by the literal typewritten word of the other one. So it's, it's becoming horrible because we're treating each other like things that need to be run instead of having a sensitivity, an intuitive and a spontaneous sensitivity towards being a human being. All right. A little longer than I wanted to, but it's not too bad. Thanks.